Hello students. Okay, what we've done so far is we have solved one and two step equations. Now these two step equations are slightly more difficult, so I thought they deserved their own separate video. So looking at our first example, my two operations are add six and divide by three. And what you might be thinking is, well, we have to undo the adding and subtracting first. However, you need to remember that whenever you've got add or subtract in a fraction, there really are brackets around that expression. We don't write them, but they really are there. So in fact, that is brackets, and that's going to be the last thing that we undo. So anytime you see an addition or subtraction in the numerator or denominator of a fraction, first thing I always do is put brackets around it. So the first thing I have to do here is multiply by 3. I'll squeeze it in just there and multiply by 3. And these 3s cancel out. And that leaves just p plus 6. Now, because this is no longer in a fraction, I no longer need to write the brackets. So I can just write the p plus 6. And that equals 15. Once again, a two-step equation has become a one-step equation. Subtract 6 from both sides. That's the opposite of adding. Plus 6 minus 6 is equal to 0. And p plus 0 is just p. And 15 take away 6 is 9. OK, let's do a quick check on that. 9 plus 6 is 15. 15 divided by 3 is 5, so that is correct. So the lesson from this example, if you have an addition or subtraction in the numerator and or the denominator, put brackets around the expression. Okay, looking at the second example, what makes this one a bit different to what we've done so far is we're actually subtracting the term that includes the unknown in it. Now, the easiest way to solve this, in my opinion, is to get rid of the subtraction. So in place of subtract, we put add, and that means we have to change the sign of the second term. So subtracting 3y is the same as adding negative 3y. Now that we're adding, order doesn't make any difference. So I've got negative 3y plus 20. I can start by subtracting 20 from both sides. 20 take 20 is 0, so that cancels out. And that leaves me with just negative 3y. And 4 subtract 20 is negative 16. OK, here's our second um, thing that's new. Um, if I divide both sides by negative 3, I don't get a nice whole number. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, answers to equations can be fractions or decimals. So in this case, I just continue dividing both sides by negative 3. Negative 3 divide negative 3 goes to 1. And 1 times y is y. And negative 16 divide negative 3. Well, negative divided by negative is a positive. So that becomes positive 16 on 3. And that's the correct answer. If you prefer, you can write it as a mixed number. 3 goes into 16 five times with one remainder. Usually, um, in a textbook, you'll see the answer left as an improper fraction. Now, checking this one by putting 16 on 3 back into that does get a little bit tricky. So my suggestion is if you have a fairly complicated answer, e.g. a fraction, the best way to check it is to just go back and work carefully through your steps once again. Alternatively, if you have a calculator um, that allows you to put fractions into it, you might want to use your calculator and go 20 minus 3 times 16 over 3 on the calculator and see if you get 4. OK, and the last example. Well, once again, this is harder because we've got a negative and a negative and a subtraction. But if we're careful, it shouldn't be too difficult. Once again, uh, change the subtract 2n to add negative 2n. So that's the same as negative 2n plus negative 6. 
So if I'm adding negative 6, the opposite of that is just adding positive 6 to both sides. So just think about that one for a second. I'm adding negative 6. To cancel out adding negative 6, I add positive 6. 6 plus negative 6 goes to 0. And I'm left with just negative 2n. And negative 3 plus 6 is positive 3. Okay, now I have to undo multiplying by negative 2 by dividing by negative 2. And they cross out. And that leaves me with n equals. We've got 3 divided by negative 2. We don't like to leave our negative signs in our denominator. So there's two ways you could write this. You could write that as negative 3 halves. Positive divided by negative is a negative. Or you could write it as negative 3 over 2. So if you want to put the negative sign on one of the numbers, put it in the numerator. And then, of course, you could also write it as a mixed number. So negative 1 and 1 half. Once again, I suggest you don't try to substitute this back into there unless you have a calculator. The better way to check it is to just carefully go through the steps and make sure you've done everything uh, correctly. Okay, moving on to some examples for you to try. So these are very similar to the ones that I just did. So please turn the video or pause the video, um, have a go with these questions and come back and check your answers once you've finished. And while you're doing that, I will move that. Okay, welcome back students. Okay, let's see how we went here. Now, once again, because I've got um, an addition in the numerator of a fraction, the first thing I do is I put brackets around that, which means the last thing I'm going to undo is adding two. Brackets are the last thing that we uh, do when we're solving. So I've got to multiply by four, and I've got to multiply by four, and the fours cancel out. That leaves me with m plus 2 equals 12. Subtract 2 from both sides. Plus 2 minus 2 equals 0. And m plus 0 is just m. And 12 take 2 is 10. OK, let's do a quick check on that. 10 plus 2 is 12. Notice we're adding first. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. So that does give us the correct answer. Second uh, question, we're subtracting the unknown. My preferred way to solve that is change it to add the opposite or add the negative. So now I've got um, negative 4h plus 24. The opposite of um, adding 24 is subtracting 24. So I do that to both sides. 24 take 24 goes to 0 plus negative 4h. 3 subtract negative 24 is negative 21. And the last step for this equation is to divide by negative 4. Negative 4 divide negative 4 cancels out leaving just the h. And negative divided by negative is positive, so I can write it as 21 over 4. Or as a mixed number, 4 goes into 21 five times with one remaining. And once again, it's too difficult to substitute that into the equation to check it. Chances are you're going to make a mistake in doing that. So you're better off just checking it by carefully working through your steps. And the last example. Once again, I have a subtraction. I'm going to change that to plus the negative. So now I've got negative 5n plus negative 2. So the opposite of adding negative 2 is adding positive 2. So I add 2 to both sides. Minus 2 plus 2 goes to 0. That leaves me with just negative 5n equals and negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. And the last step is divide both sides by negative 5. And the negative 5s cancel out. 
and n equals negative divided by negative is positive. So that equals 6 over 5. And 5 goes into 6 once, remainder 1. So if you prefer to write it as a mixed number, it's going to be 1 and 1 fifth. And once again, just check your work by working through your steps once again. So that's how we go about solving hard two-step equations. So in summary, if you have um, an addition or subtraction in a fraction, top or bottom, put brackets around it when you're solving the equation. If you're subtracting the unknown, change it to add the opposite is my preferred way to do it. And same thing down here. This one just a bit harder because we had quite a few negatives. Okay, well in the next video, you're gonna go on and have a look at solving some three-step equations.